Hey everyone, it's your favorite mountaineer hunter. That is, unless your family member's a mountaineer. But anyways, uh, there's a mountain in New Zealand called Mount Tamatawaka... Tamatawaka... Tamatawaking... All right, anyways. Thank goodness Mr. Joe is teaching that when we mess up, we can simply try again. Whew! We'll also be learning about displacement from Miss Amber. And all right, guys, well, I'm going to practice saying this New Zealand mountain again. But before that, make sure we are taking notes, paying attention, sitting up straight and tall, and let's check out this message. Tamatawakin Tenguang. Well, hello, 1132 kids. My name, in case you forgot, is Mr. Joe, and we are continuing our series, Mountain Climbers. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands, but it just kind of feels right. Do it with me, Mountain Climbers. Anyway, Mountain Climbers is a series all about getting away with God. But Mr. Joe, what does that mean? Well, I hope you've been paying attention. We've been talking about it for a while. Getting away with God, it means our quiet time, reading our Bible, the time we spend praying with God. Go with me to our series verse. If you haven't written it down, now is the time. It's found in Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. And it says, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided provided. We've been talking about when we put God first and spend time in his presence, we get everything that we need. And just to recap really quickly about last week, we talked about how climbing was Moses's practice and friendship was his access. And then we really asked the question, what paths are well-worn in your life? And if you missed last week's message, or really if you've missed any of the past week's messages, or maybe you just want to catch up because you love them so much, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, 1132kids. And make sure while you're there, subscribe if you aren't already. Leave a comment and also like the videos and tell everyone you know, of course. But today's big answer is, are you ready? Drum roll, let me hear it, let me hear it. Stop. When I mess up, I can just try again. I love that, I'm gonna say it one more time because I love it so much. When I mess up, I can just try again. Which brings me to our memory verse. Memory verse, write it down, you gotta remember it. This is our memory verse for this week. It's found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 16. And it says, The godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. And I don't know about you, but I'm not wicked, and neither are you. So that was our memory verse, Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 16. And we're talking about being consistent in spending time with God. It isn't always easy. Trust me, I have been there. There are a few things that will trip us up along the way. When we're trying to spend time with God, we're trying to make it a daily discipline to read our Bible, to pray. But there are things that trip us up along the way. And today, we're going to look at three. Everyone hold up your three three snares that keep us from spending time in God's presence. And no, a snare is not a snare drum. I mean, it is a snare drum, but the snare that we're talking about is something that trips us up and something that traps us. So we're talking about three snares that keep us from spending time in God's presence. The first snare, make sure you're taking notes, is the snare of impatience. Oof. Do I really gotta talk about impatience? I don't think I'm the best example of patience, but just go with me. In the book of Psalm, chapter 27, verse 14, it says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait 
for the Lord. It says wait for the Lord twice. That's how you know the Bible is being really serious when it says something twice in the same verse. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Already in this series, we have talked about not outpacing God. We want to be led by God. So we need to make sure that we are following behind him, that we're not being Usain Bolt and just sprinting super fast. We got to make sure we're behind God because he's our navigator. Being patient is one of the hardest things to do. Patience is actually one of the fruits of the spirits, which we've talked about before. And honestly, that's really, really good news for us because patience isn't just something that we should just try really, really hard to have, even though it's really hard, especially when you're in traffic on your way home from school and all you want to do is get home and take a nap. But patience is a byproduct of being a dwelling place or a house for God's Holy Spirit. Patience isn't just waiting, it's waiting with a good attitude. We can do this when we spend time with God. The Holy Spirit is our helper. And if we can just get into God's presence, reading our Bible, praying, just sitting in his presence, listening to worship music, we will be surprised that our patience is added to. The snare of impatience is just that because it tricks us into thinking that we don't have time to wait on God or we don't have the time to get into presence. And when that is actually the very solution to our problem. I mean, hello, God, don't you know how much homework I have or how many practices or all these friends I got to hang out with? But we get patience when we spend time with God. So we need to make sure that if we're wanting to work on our patience, we need to spend time with God. And then you won't be so frustrated when you're driving home from school. And then the second snare is the snare of the past. The enemy likes to lie to us and get us to believe that we are the mistakes that we have made. He will bring up past decisions or things that we feel bad about so that we don't feel valuable enough to spend time with God. The snare of the past tries to keep us there, tries to keep us in the past. It tries to keep us trapped, believing a lie. But God says that you are valuable, that there was a very high price that was paid for you. God sent his one and his only son for you. Jesus, he gave up his entire life just for you. Your sins, those things that you've done that you feel guilty about, they've already been forgiven and you are not your mistakes. We have to remove or displace the lies from the enemy and we need to replace them with what God says about us. And speaking of displacement, I don't really know too much about it, so I'm going to call in for some help. So let's make sure we're sitting up straight and tall. Let's make sure we're paying attention, taking really, really good notes because we're about to learn some good stuff about displacement. So why don't we all check out this illustration? Hey everyone, I'm Miss Amber and today we are going to learn some science. I hope you are as excited as I am. Now, have you ever had um, a thought in your head that just couldn't stop? You just couldn't stop thinking about it. Um, it could be something good, like um, how much you want some amazing vanilla ice cream, or it can be something that is worrisome, like not knowing if you are going to do well on a test at school. Or maybe it can be a thought about yourself. Maybe you made a mistake or a bad choice, and you feel really bad about it, maybe you start to think that you are bad instead of just thinking about whatever was done as being bad. See, God's word tells us that we are God's masterpiece. Now that can't be bad. See, sometimes the enemy can lie to us and try to get us to believe that we are the things we do. 
But the Bible says that we all have sinned and messed up. But we all have a Savior who paid for those sins. The enemy wants us to feel like we are not valued or loved because of the things that we have done. But we know that that's not true. But even so, it can be hard to get those thoughts or lies out of our heads. How do we do that? We can't just stop thinking and empty our minds right? Like it's a crazy place in there sometimes, at least in my mind. I'm thinking about like a million things at one time. So we can't just stop. We have to replace those thoughts. We have to replace those lies with the truth. See, God's word is truth. We have to know what God says about us. We have to know that. We have to know scripture. See, it works kind of like this. You might be like, Miss Amber, why do you have all of that stuff on the table? It's for this exact thing. See, today we are going to learn about this kind of big word. It's called displacement. Displacement means just moving from one thing from one place to another place. So we are going to be moving thoughts, but those are going to be represented uh, with some of these wonderful things I have on um, the table. See, this, this cup right here, this cup, it has water in it, so I'm going to try not to spill. This cup is like our brain, our mind. And this uh, dye right here, okay, if you're doing this at home, use parent supervision because food coloring stains stuff and moms don't like it. I, I personally know that from experience. Okay, so this represents like our thoughts. So let's say we have like a thought, a worrisome thought, or maybe even a lie from the enemy. These represent our thoughts. See how it can kind of cloud our minds and it just lives there? I can't just take the dye out of my mind now. It's just kind of in there, right? So some are small, some are big, some are good, some are bad, but we can't just pour out our minds. Even when we're sleeping, our brains are still thinking of things. That's crazy, right? But we have to add new thoughts to take up the space or displace that old thought, the old thoughts that we were um, thinking and the, the space that the old thoughts were taking up. The new thoughts that we should be having, they should be truth. See, truth is what battles lies. We have to add God's word like this. Okay, I have a couple of examples and they are going to represent different things that God's word says about us. And I'm gonna pour them in our minds, okay? And then we're gonna see what happens to the water. So after each one, I'm gonna hold it up and show you guys what is happening. And I'm really excited about it. Okay, so the very first one is this. This is going to be Starburst. I may have eaten some of these earlier, but um, that's okay. There's forgiveness for me or they were just delicious. Okay, so these starbursts represent um, this truth or this scripture or what God's word says about us. God's word says in Ephesians 2.10 that we are God's masterpiece. So we're going to replace an old thought with a new thought, kind of like this. We are God's masterpiece. We're making a lovely mess. Do you guys like making messes? I kind of do. See what happens here, and I'm going to show you guys, is some of our water is coming out. That's why I have this lovely tray. See, we have the new thoughts on the inside. I don't know if you can see them really clearly because of the blue thoughts, but the starbursts are in here. That's the new thought, and some of the old thoughts came out into my tray, which is kind of crazy. Okay, so let's, do you guys wanna do another one? Let's do a, another one. Okay, so another thought that we could have represents these beans. So you can see the old thoughts here on these black beans. These black beans will represent this thought of truth of God's word that says this, I have the mind of Christ. So if we feel like our mind is crazy, we can say, wait a minute. God's word says, I have the mind of Christ. That is truth. And that is found in 1 Corinthians 2.16. So we're going to put that in our mind. So we're going to pour, I have the mind of Christ into our mind. And the old thoughts are coming out as we add the new thoughts, the new truth that we are speaking 
over ourselves. See, it's still even coming out. Oh, it's displacing or moving the old thoughts and making room for the new thoughts, which is exciting. Okay, let's do another one. Um, let's do these um, marbles. These really cool marbles is another one of God's truth. It says this, nothing, not one thing, nothing can separate me from God's love. So that means that I don't have to do anything to earn it. I can't unearn it. I can't mess it up. Nothing can separate me from God's love. And that's found in Romans 8, 38. Let's see what happens when we add these to our mind. Oh, so much splashing. I, I shouldn't like this so much. I kind of enjoy making messes. Okay, as you can see, our cup is getting all filled up with God's truth and God's word. There's not much room left for anything else, which is so good. That's how we have to, that's why we have to know God's truth. Okay, I have one more item here with us today. It is actually some really cool rocks. I don't know if you guys have like a rock collection at home, but we have like some really neat rocks. We have some gems, okay we have some like really pretty things. So this is actually going to represent one more of God's promises, one more scripture, one more thing of truth from God's word. And there are so many. There's only four examples here, but we have so many more in God's word. So this one is the truth that I can take every thought, good or bad, worrisome, stressful, whatever it is, I can take every thought captive. And God's word says that in 2 Corinthians 10, 5. So 2 Corinthians 10, 5, I can take every thought captive. Whoa, this is so cool. Okay. I'm kind of nerding out over here. I just love science. See, the science behind this is displacement. See, as we add God's truth, it displaces or moves out the other thoughts. How cool is that? This works with the items here that we've talked about today which is pretty amazing. There's a lot of other thoughts here in my tray. This works with the items that we have here today, but it also really works with our thoughts. See, remember, when we need to get rid of a lie, we replace it with the truth. When we need to know what God's word says about us, we need to look at it and we need to put it in our minds. God has a good plan for you. So we've talked about our first two snares. The first one was the snare of impatience. We get patience by spending time with God. And the second snare was the snare of the past. The enemy tries to keep us in our past by making us feel bad, by keeping us thinking about it when God has already forgiven us. And then we have our last snare, the snare of immaturity or as some may say, immaturity. Immaturity, immaturity, which one do you say? Honestly, both are technically correct, but I say immaturity. Anyway, if we give up when things get tough, then we will miss all that God has for us. And listen, it's not always easy to spend time with God. I know I kid, but it's true. We have a lot of homework to do. We have lots of sports that we're playing. We have church, we have friends, we have family stuff. The list just goes on and on and on and on and on. So it's not always easy to truly spend good quality time with God each and every day. And we may even have to push past all of these snares that try to get in the way. But ultimately, we become stronger because of the struggle. When training for space, an astronaut has to train with their body to withstand incredible force. They go in this crazy machine called a centrifuge. Try to say that three times fast. Centrifuge, centri centri centrifuge, I can't do it. Try it later. They will buckle into this chair and the centrifuge spins them really fast, trying to simulate shuttling the launching into space. I'm getting dizzy. I need to stop. I need to stop. I get really, really motion sick, even if I'm like driving in a car. So I don't think I can be an astronaut. Anyway, the centrifuge spins them really, really fast, 
trying to simulate this shuttle launching into space. And the space shuttle pushes against their body at such a great force that their heart might not be able to pump their blood to their brain with enough force. And then the astronaut would pass out. If you've ever watched like a takeoff or even like a movie about space, sometimes you see the people, they like pass out just because of the force. There's not enough blood pumping to their head. I mean, that's crazy. That's so scary. Why do people do this? Anyway, that is not what you want to happen if you're flying in a spaceship. The training is really, really intense, but it conditions their hearts to pump harder and to pump stronger to do what it needs to do to keep the astronaut safe and conscious. I mean, you wanna be awake and when you're taking off in a shuttle, you are going into space. It's pretty intense up there. The snare of immaturity, it keeps us from spending time with God. It tells us that it's way too difficult or that we're not old enough to be used by God, but both are untrue. There's even someone in the Bible by the name of Timothy. And when you're spending time with God, I would definitely recommend reading up on Timothy. Timothy, when he was just 15 years old, that's right, just a few years older than some of you guys, and pretty close to my age too, I'm not that old. Timothy was just 15 years old and he took over a church. I mean, could you imagine a 15 year old running a church and telling people your parents' age or your neighbor's age what to do? I mean, that's pretty intense. But one of Timothy's mentors was the apostle Paul. And Paul numerous times would tell Timothy, do not be discouraged because of your age, because you are called. And we talked about that earlier when we talked about the snare of the past, we talked about how God sees us, how we're valuable, how there's a high price that was paid just for us. So don't let your age or don't let some of the things that you've done before or even some of the things that you haven't done already, don't let those get in the way from what you know God's called you to do. And it can be tough. And if you miss a day, it's totally fine. God has grace for us, but we need to make sure that we're continuing to truly push with everything that we have to spend time with God. I mean, wherever you do your quiet time, treat it like a centrifuge. You know, you're just training your heart to grow more so that you can know God more and also so that you can make God more known to people that are in your family, people that you go to school with, people that are on your sports teams, or maybe even in your band. I mean, come on, my clarinet people. I didn't play clarinet, but clarinets are important. They're really pretty. Those people that you sit next to, they need to know about Jesus. And the way that you can have the courage and even the knowledge to tell them about Jesus is by spending time with God. So I want to challenge you this week. I want you to identify some snares that keep you from getting into God's presence. And ask yourself, do I need help from the Holy Spirit to have more patience? Or even what about displacing some lies that you believed in yourself, believing that you're not enough or believing that you're not called? Do you need to remind yourself that you are able to be used by God right now, no matter what your age is, whether you're in first grade or whether you're in sixth grade, you can still be used no matter what. Don't fall into the trap. And remember, when I mess up, I can just try again. God has grace for us and God loves us no matter what. When I mess up, I can just try again and God will be there ready to walk with us. I've had so much fun with you guys today and I can't wait to continue this amazing series and I will see you guys next time. Wow, I learned so much today. Not how to say tomato whatever, but I did learn that there's three snares or traps that keep us from spending time in God's presence. Impatience, the past, and immaturity. 
All of these try to trap us from spending time in God's presence. But we know that when we mess up, we can just try again. All right, well, before we say bye for the day, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we'll see you next time.